Yo, yo, check it out. It's your man, Dot X. Understand that I'm in Garmin Studio. And I just want to let y'all know, man, I got a couple of projects coming out. I got a project here coming out. You'll hear about that soon. And I got an album coming out December 4th. Love Hella Right. You can get that on iTunes. Look for the first single. This is our thing with my man, Farrell Munch. That's how it's going down. The video will be out soon. Well, I was in Germany when the hurricane came, you know. So, uh, you know, I, I just got to look at it uh, from afar. But... If, if you look at mathematics and if, if you look at history, a lot of things that's happening now was predicted and they just manifested themselves now. You understand what I'm saying? 20 years ago, who would have thought that water could come into New York City, downtown, and flood New York City? That just lets you see Manhattan is an island. You understand? And, and it's been predicted throughout history, like from, from, from scientists and Nostradamus and people like that. Like... These things is manifesting themselves now. Typhoons, uh, they talked about thousands of years ago. And great waters will rise upon the lands. And also, uh, it'll come great fires uh, or burn down the lands. When you look at California, you got fires that raged out there for two and three weeks that went on. Great fires, so pillaged the land. And at the end, they was talking about man will eat man and they'll be fighting for water. You understand? And, and maybe our lifetime won't see it. Maybe our kids' lifetime won't see it. But maybe about 100 years down the line, who knows? Well, I'm going to tell you honestly, you know, I'm not really a political person like that. But, you know what I'm saying? To, to, to pick out of the two, I would have had to go with, uh, you know, Obama. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people say that... Uh, that it was a, a, a racial decision, and, and, and part of it was, but if you look at the history and the, uh, the content of America, when has it not been racial decisions? You understand what I'm saying? Uh, this country was built on racial stuff and dividing people and conquering people, so it's just coming to manifest when they took it from the Indians, you know what I'm saying? What, why wouldn't I vote for, the, for, for, for Obama? You know what I'm saying? Even if I didn't know political things, I'm, I'm going to go with the black man because he's black. And you could probably get another white dude who could sit right here and be like, I don't rock with politics, but I'm going to go with Romney because he's white. You understand? And that's just how this country was built. They tried to sugarcoat it, man. This country was built on racism and taking shit from the next man. I mean, I've I seen it progressing, man, and, and you know, yeah, it's a couple of them I like. Main thing, di white rappers, black rappers, differentiate different yourself. You know, separate yourself. You can't be a white rapper and sound like this dude, man. You understand? I mean, it's a lot of white rappers I hear some of them, and they sound like this man. And I'm like, yo, you know, and, and they getting they getting a lot of love on that. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, to me, it seemed like if it was a black dude sounding like this man, it'd be a problem. They'd be like, yo, he sound like him. But when the white boy do it, you know, it's all good. And they run with it. So now it's like, oh, yo, he's, but he's dope, though. Yeah, he's dope, but you sound like this nigga. If, if your whole style and your swag is based on that, and your whole, and, and not just that, you could sound like a dude, but if your, your word phrasing and imagery sound like this man, then that's basura. I was just blessed to have that, you know what I'm saying? That was something... Thank goodness that was a, that that separated me. You know what I'm saying? If my voice wouldn't have been different, and if it was it would have sound regular, maybe I would have, I would have fell in that regular bag, and, and you know what I'm saying, and been in that bag. But it was it was my voice that separated me, and uh, I'm thankful for it. Like each person, each rap, I said you, you got to find something that separates you from everybody else. Well, I would tell a lot of these young boys coming up, you know. It's easy to get caught in the system of sounding like everybody else because that's what everybody else is doing. And, and, and a lot of young boys figure that, well, yo, if this dude is winning with this sound, then that's how I got to sound. And, and, and that may work, but you playing with heavy odds, then, like, you, 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 you fighting the game of being the one picked out of five million. Uh, whereas a lot of times I tell kids, man, yo, create your own style, work on your show game, have your show game tight. When you go do a show... Have your show game tight. Have a DJ. You know what I'm saying? I can do a couple of things and uh, just be different. Like, it's easy to sound like how all these other rappers are sounding. You could do that, but you're just going to be in the bag with five million. And if they shake the bag and they pull somebody out, if your name don't get pulled, then, then you're going to be stuck outside that bubble. You know what I'm saying? If But sep try to separate yourself. You know what I'm saying? Keep your rhyme skills up. You know what I'm saying? Keep your current, current affairs up. Always throw that in it because, you know, it's but so much, and I, I told people, like, as far as, like, the drug rap and this and that, it ain't gonna never be like it was but when, when I was coming up. And, I, and that's just because, and, and I would want it to be like that in certain times. But, uh, 
you know, it's, it's cameras up now and, and they solving murders and this and that. You're not going to kill nobody basically how it used to be and get away with it. It's going to be a cam over there. It's going to be this nosy person that, that probably snitch you out. So all that's dead, man. So you got to try to be able to flip it and do something else with the lyrics. Well, it, it just comes with the advancement of technology. And, and you know, and uh, it also comes from a lot of time the labels, you know, Picking and choosing who they wanted, where it made dudes more or less get on their grind. Basically, dudes out in the Bay Area started that independent thing out there. So, you know, they've been grinding for years, so they knew the grind. But, uh, you know, also, as the computer grew, you know, it became a less need for labels. You know what I'm saying? So now, what you what the labels was doing, you know, you can do in the crib now. You know what I'm saying? you All you need now, basically, is... Uh, you know the, the distribution but you know nowadays you can build your buzz off of the off of the internet you know what i'm saying so a lot of labels man they fell by the wayside simply because technology advanced i mean well in, internet is a, is, a, is a twofold thing because you know when i first came out there was no internet so you know as far as uh you know us getting product to germany or whatever you have to physically ship it out there or, or you know they had to get it but as now you can punch a couple of buttons or keys and you connect it to Germany, connect it to France or wherever you want to do. And also, you know, that was good in a sense, but in the bad sense, you know, the internet now created a uh, studio studio gangsters and dudes that uh, punch the keys in the crib. You can create whatever persona you want to make now. So, you know, and it, it created a, a glut in the industry too. Whereas now, Basically, it's no fans. Everybody got somebody that's doing something. Whether, yo, I got an artist or I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Everybody feel they got a hand in the business now where it ain't really no more fans. Well, you got to look at it, man. Hip-hop is about 50 years old. When you got classical compositions from Mozart and Beethoven that's three, 400 years old, rap is still defining itself right now. You know what I'm saying? So these are just different chambers of rap that's opening up right now. It's still... You know, you got the people that came out around my age, that's 40 or whatever, that they still love hip hop, so they got their own chamber, you know what I'm saying? Whereas, they chamber, that chamber's not gonna be the same as my daughter's 20 year old chamber. She gonna have the people that she like in her chamber, and it's and not to say that's bad, a lot of the old dudes come out saying that, uh, Dudes don't respect the game or this or that or they get mad, I mean, that they not playing respect to them. Like, I mean, you you, 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 you get down with it, but how much respect are you supposed to pay somebody? Okay, I like your joint, but if you make some shit now that sound like trash, I'm not going to respect that either, man. So, you know, it's, it's twofold, you know, so, like, you got to let some of these young kids grow and let them do what they do. They're young people, and they're going to do what young people do. I was a young person, and I did what I did then, and I wasn't really trying to hear too many old dudes in my face yelling, talk about this and that you gotta let them live and experience like I lived and experience well education is always man knowledge is to know man so you can you can never stop learning you know what I'm saying I mean you you never had an age when you can stop learning so that's what it is man you always got to learn and and grow man and uh as far as the kids man you know I'm, I'm heavily involved with the kids man you know as far as coaching basketball and working with the schools man I just like to you know be a force in young people's life and also you know, I feel like, especially in, in a lot of our hoods, man, you know, you gotta have te people teaching these young kids that, that, that they can identify with and understand. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times, you know, when you're in school, a lot of times the teachers that you didn't that you didn't grow with was the teachers that didn't understand you, that didn't didn't know your struggle and your your situation and how you came up. It's different when you when when, when you can teach a kid and actually been on his block or know his parents. When I when I when I taught in New Rochelle, most of the kids in my class, first of all, I went to the school I taught at. So most of the kids in the class was 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 uh, children of people I went to school with. So it was easier for me to reach them. When they get out of line, I could easily be like, yo, you know I know your pops. You know what I'm saying? So that would kind of slow some of them down, man, and that makes a difference in the hood. How I would teach a kid in Queensbridge, I can't teach a kid the same way on the low, on the Upper East Side. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's got to be a different a differentiation of it. Oh, well, we all ready together. Like, we do shows, brand new, and do shows three, four times a month. So basically, I mean, our, our shit is like, like riding a bicycle, you know what I'm saying? We got it down to a science right now, like riding a bicycle. So we basically know what to do as far as shows and going out there. And just, I would, would, would try to tell some of these kids, man, like, just because you hear dudes 
song on the radio or see a video, that don't mean he's winning. Do the, do the science behind it. It's a lot of dudes that you don't see that's doing shows every day. Would you rather have your, radio, your song on Hot 97 in New York that's playing and you're not doing no shows or you, or you got your grind filled out where you're doing two months of shows in Europe somewhere, this or that. That's, that's where you got to decide what, what type of rapper you're going to be.